Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to um, our first session of our series, A Day in the Life of Family Medicine. I would like to thank Noah Brown and Kelly Doherty for their guidance, assistance, ideas, and energy um, about promoting family medicine to our medical students. They were instrumental in getting this organized and started, so I wanted to give them kudos. So if you want to applause or um, put your little emoji up, that would be great. Um, I also want to point out that I want to thank the Missouri Health Professional Placement Services. Um, they are a nonprofit group here in Jefferson City, and they are solely working to recruit um, residents and physicians to rural areas. And two ways that they do that is through a loan repayment program. So if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out. They also have a job board and you can find all of that information on their website, which is on this slide. And I'll also provide that a little bit later um, through the session. So I wanna go ahead and get to the task at hand. And Dr. Misty Todd is here with us today. Um, Dr. Todd has served on the MAFP Board of Directors as the alternate resident director and as the resident director. And she is a new physician and is um, affiliated with Rothwell Regional Hospital in Sedalia. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to her. She's gonna do some screen sharing. So I'm gonna let her take, take the controls. And um, thank you very much, Dr. Todd. Hi. Thanks, Kathy, for having me. So I'm going to leave that slide up for a little bit while I'm talking. Um, and then I put together a very, very brief photo um, PowerPoint because it's really boring to hear someone talk and like not understand who they are as a person. Um, so like Kathy said, uh, my name is Misty Todd. I am a 2000, dear Lord, 2000. 13 grad from Westminster College. I graduated med school in 2017 from the University of Missouri. And then I went to residency at the University of Missouri as well. Um, if you Google me, like this is what comes up, uh, but this is not a good um, uh, overview of what I do. So I do um, family medicine. I'm employed by Bothell, but I have a very interesting job. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that through photos because that's more interesting than listening to my face. So I grew up on a farm up here in LaGrange. I did a lot of my training here in Columbia. Full disclosure, I, my husband is also a family physician and he went to a school up in Kirksville, which is why there's stars there. Those are like all the places that we always went. And now we live in Sedalia. So um, I put like 100,000 miles on my car in med school and uh, ran the wheels off the highway trying to get between places. And I still do because right now I'm dual employed between um, Bothwell Hospital in Sedalia, which is where I'm at right now with this name tag. And then I'm an attending physician at University of Missouri, which is this name tag. And so in both of those places, I do inpatient medicine and I do um, deliveries and well baby nursery. And then in Sedalia, actually down in Cole Camp, there should be a little thing right here. Um, I have a clinic in a town of about 2000 and oversee a nurse practitioner there. So this is home. These are my dogs. I'm a real human, I promise. Um, and that is where I love. So I am born and bred rural Missouri girl. Always knew I was gonna save small town Missouri, but I did it in the most interesting way and never thought I would be where I am. So um, if you take anything from this, it's say yes to opportunities and um, you never know where they're gonna take you. So I got married, this boy. Uh, his name's Matt Roars, he's my husband. He is finishing his last year at the University of Missouri in residency. Oh no, can you guys see that? I'm also on call for OB and did a section this morning. And uh, that was my EMR giving me a notification, sorry guys. Um, so he is from Sedalia and that's what brought us here. Um, it's nice to have family with small roots. And then we, I gave up this, this is a view at home, or this is our new home. So um, I feel like one of the big misconceptions I want to get across is like, the only medicine doctors don't make money. Um, we bought 72 acres in this giant house and barn 
on a whim and can very comfortably afford that with um, a new physician income and with a significant other still in residency. And that's not a ploy for like money. It's just part of what we do because you worry about debt and you worry about getting paid and you have to pay your bills. And so um, doing all the things I do, I still get paid well um, to live outside of the hospital. So the hospital is up here about eight minutes and then my clinic is about 12 minutes the other direction. So it's kind of perfectly located for me to make deliveries. Um, so I went through a day. Kathy was like, we want to know what you do in a day. So usually I hit snooze about four, four or five times. It's in nine minute increments. If anyone has an iPhone, you also know that. Yep. I see lots of Snickers, you know. Um, and I have to work out in the morning or else I don't. Um, today I like cut my workout in half because I was running late and I didn't know it was supposed to snow because that wasn't on my radar. So um, in the mornings I work out. I usually call my dad. This is my dad. He's at home. I'm really close to my parents. So I talk to them every day. Uh, then I usually go to the hospital first. So when I'm at Bothwell, I admit patients to the inpatient service and I deliver babies. So this is actually a picture from today. Like literally I just uploaded it, same earrings and everything. Um, this is my OB crew. So I did it C-section this morning for a little baby boy that's doing great. Um, I came in and did the C-section yesterday. I was on call for inpatient family medicine and I admitted two patients for my partners. So we all follow our own patients when they're admitted, but on the actual admit day, we all take one admit day a week. And so that gives you some freedom in your clinic. So the hospital isn't calling, the ER isn't calling in your clinic and you can kind of get flow going. So my admin days for family medicine are usually Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Fridays, but Wednesdays are always my OB days. And so that's the only stability in my schedule throughout this whole talk is Wednesday. I am always available in the hospital delivering babies at Bothwell. So that is my crew from this morning. So this is Ruth Ann, and this is Kirsten, and this is Christy. And that was who did it. Um, these are just fun pictures because I don't do just medicine. I love to fish. This is my dog, my husband. Um, that is not a wall mounter, but it was cute and I caught it. Um, then this morning after the delivery, um, I had a meeting with this person. Do any of you know who's in this picture? I think um, maybe you do. My queen. Oh, now, now, now. I better at least be a princess. No, I'm kidding. Kelly obviously knows who this is. So this is Laura Morris and Jim Stevermer. So anyone um, updated on USTSPS stuff. Um, Dr. Tumor is the newest inductee on USTSPS. And Laura Morris um, is working with me to start a residency in Sedalia. So I, this is when I was a resident um, and I work under both of them. So I feel like I've been trained by the best. Obviously we're all very, uh, all very biased by the people that we train under. But so I had a meeting with Laura and we are, um, 15 days away from a site visit from the ACGME. So I am the associate residency director here in Sedalia. So we are starting a rural training tract um, to train physicians here for a completely separate residency, but we're partnered with the University of Missouri. So when residents come here, um, they will spend their first year at Mizzou um, primarily, and they will have clinic in Sedalia approximately one day a week for their continuity clinic, but they will do all of their ICUs and critical care stuff at the big academic center. And then their second and third year, they'll primarily be here on site in Sedalia, um, getting full access to the hospital. So all the surgeons are on board, all the OBs are on board, ENTs on board. So all the procedures that in um, bigger academic institutions, you're kind of um, advocating for yourself against other residents here, you'll have full um, priority with patients. And so I wanted something like that when I was a resident and so did Laura. So we're have partnered together and are kind of um, working with a larger group of people to see this through. So um, that is a big part of what I do right now. So I have um, one administrative day a week um, to try and continue to write, you know, hundreds of pages of documents to please the ACGME to get accreditation. So that was this morning as well. And then I reviewed curriculum with her. So we went over all three years of curriculum this morning. Um, and then I got a call from my nurse. So this is my clinic staff in Cool Camp. So um, Cool Camp, Missouri is about 20 minutes south of Sedalia. 
Uh, this is me in the middle. This is Heather. She's my PSR. She's my front desk lady. She is my gatekeeper and my security guard and all those things. This is Linda, who is my lab tech. And she's also, well, she's actually a radiology tech that's cross-trained to be a lab. So um, another part of what I do is um, I advocate with the MAFP and I'm really involved in policy. And so one of the things most recently is that um, they were trying to pass that all radiology techs had to be certified um, to take x-rays. And I am a huge um, advocate against that because I wouldn't have x-ray in my clinic if that were to pass. Um, we have a really hard time recruiting people. Um, and so she was accredited way back in the day, but hadn't kept up with her certification. Um, and so she is amazing. Like I would trust her to take pictures of anything. But if you ask me to go take an x-ray of a wrist, I'm going to be like, I don't know. So um, that was my little spiel in there. Love, Linda. Um, Stephanie, she's our head nurse. She does all of our ordering. She's wonderful. And this is my nurse practitioner. Um, her name is Pamela, and she um, trained at the University of Missouri, and she's about a decade and a half older than me. And so being a young female, we obviously have all-female clinic. This is Susan, she retired, my new nurse Kathy isn't here. But um, it's really interesting because I'm the leader of the clinic and I make most of the calls and I have the most medical knowledge. I don't have the most medical experience, which is very important to differentiate, but I have the most knowledge. So I have all of these women who are much older than me coming to me for advice. And so we have a great team. Um, they do a good job of supporting me and I do them and we have a really good time. So this Thursday is Hawaiian day. We always have uh, Thursdays or purple day. And I got a very ugly sweater um, mailed to me from a friend. So it has a toucan on it. So we're having Thursday is Hawaiian purple day. Um, so in my clinic, I take care of as much as I can without referring out. So in my clinic, I see typical family medicine um, I do, you know, peds and geriatrics and hospice care and tons of diabetes and um, hypertension, those type of things. But I also treat patients for hepatitis C. Um, I also prescribe Suboxone. I do a lot of IUDs and Nexlanons and colposcopies. So I'm really into women's health. Um, I deliver babies, so I take care of a lot of pregnant women. Um, but this is my core group. I talk with them every day, even if I'm not there. Um, and they have a really good pulse on what's going on with, you know, the social aspects of families in a small town and kind of help me figure out how everyone plugs in and what I need to do to get them um, really on the right path, because sometimes there's always more than what's at surface level. And this is another picture because I don't like to work all the time, believe it or not. Uh, I love to garden and I have a puppy. This is Marley. Marley the mutt. Um, and then stuff comes in all the time and you're like, what is this rash? I don't know, like there's some erythema, there's this giant plaque, but the plaques have these like raised papule things in them. I don't know. And this is where I show you this picture. So while you're in med school, it is very important to make great friends that do things that are different than you. So this is me on my wedding day. Um, and the reason I showed you the rash first is because when this stuff comes up, you phone your friends. Like it is very important to have a very wide network of instant um, referrals, like instant consults. And so in this picture, this is a trauma surgeon. This is a trauma surgeon. This is, can you see my mouse? Is it move? Yeah. This is an OB who's doing a gynoc fellowship and this is a pediatrician. And so between all of us, we just really need a radiologist. I'm kind of saying that to be funny, but I don't think that was on my radar when I was in med school. I didn't think I realized how often that I would rely on the expertise of my friends that I studied with and I knew how much they cared about patients and they wouldn't um, you know, judge me if I'm asking a stupid question. Um, so for the rashes, I have my friend, um, Dr. Sindel, um, and she gets all my derm questions. Uh, Ashley and Jamie, these two, they get all my questions about G tubes and J tubes and small bowel obstructions when I'm like, I did, I put the NG down, like all the stuff isn't working because you're not gonna see it all in residency, unfortunately. And people at different places have different experiences and it's really important to keep that network up. Um, and so this is like my girl tribe. And I highly recommend if it's girls, if it's guys, it doesn't matter who it is, like 
find your people because you'll also have knowledge that they need. COVID, I am the expert. They come to me for everything COVID because they, like, that's not within their scope of practice. That's, like, not stuff that they deal with every day. Um, they're just like, can we cut? Can we cut? Is it safe? Is the baby safe? And then, oh, my God, the mom started asking me questions, but I really just take care of the kid. And so um, you will be someone's expert, um, and it's okay to ask questions, but really hone in on those friendships now. Okay. Uh, this is me and my husband at work at the University of Missouri. So I work there sometimes, um, and this was pre-COVID. But um, what we've learned is that there is no stability in our life. So this is our godson. This is Benjamin, and this is his sister, Hadley. And Hadley is like three months old then, and we had not been able to go and meet her. So sometimes you just do life at work. So. They came to Columbia just so we could meet our two-year-old goddaughter at the hospital. Um, and life's not always that busy, but I think one thing that I didn't learn in med school that's part of my life now, and you don't really see so much at the university until you do rural medicine, is like life and medicine are just kind of one. And your friends and your family will understand that you have to be there for patients, and patients understand if you want to go see your goddaughter. So we were in morning rounds and we were literally like, I'm so sorry, it's now 1030 at 1045, like we have visitors, we are going to excuse ourselves for 15 minutes and like that's okay. So that's part of my day, I feel like my clinic staff and my hospital staff know my family because I talk about them a lot. Um, and in pre COVID times they would come visit. Um, then there's lunch. So there's always um, fun times when you work with people that you're friends with. So this was the pediatrician that was on the before slide, and this is my husband. Um, and this was this weekend. We were all working together, so literally running the hospital together, which is always a blast, um, and sharing food and just making your work family your real family, because sometimes you don't see them. Um, so there is a lot of um, not homemade food in my life. That's what I wanted you to know from this. Um, I still am part of the University of Missouri residency, so I'm a faculty member there. Um, so this was like our inpatient team last Christmas. Um, but I still give lectures to the med students there. I gave a lecture last Tuesday on syncope. Um, and so I'm still really involved with that. I'm a faculty advisor for two residents. Um, so that's part of what I do in a day. Um, occasionally, I deliver twins, which is really fun, but this is just a cute photo. Um, I drink a lot of caffeine. It's real bad. Um, and I just am, I just own it. Like, there's not enough hours in a day. And so the reason I put this up here is because sometimes you have to figure out how to say no. Um, you have to say, I'm sorry. I am at capacity. I can't do anymore. And so um, recently I started having to say no. So being a new physician, I get lots of, oh, do you want to be on the EMR committee? Oh, do you want to be on antibiotic stewardship? Oh, I bet you're really good at patient surveys. Would you like to review those? No, no, I would not. And so I feel like this has been a very trying year to figure out what's important and what's not. So part of my day is I say no a lot. I'm like, mm, can't do that. Um, but then I get to go back to clinic and I have some patients that dress up like me. So this little girl, um, she was actually, this was at my previous clinic when I was in residency. Uh, I delivered her brother and her mom took uh, labs for me. And this is all HIPAA approved, like her mom knows that I'm showing this. Uh, I actually put this on my Facebook page. Um, and she showed up. Her name is Ellie. She's actually viral on Facebook. So Google like Ellie Fulton COVID. She wrote, she made a video about how she missed her friends in school and it went viral. Like she was on CBS. It was crazy. But she came to clinic one day and was just dressed up like me. She was like, Dr. Todd, I couldn't find an orange stethoscope like yours, but I found a pink one and I think I'll wear a pink one. And so things like this make it great. Um, you know, family medicine is one of those things, like, I take care of the mom, I delivered the brother, I took care of the older brother, I get her, and, you know, um, I don't feel uncomfortable. Social media is one of those things that is really taboo. You have to watch what you write, but this was one of the few times that I've ever posted about patients, because it made me really happy. 
I feel like there are so many negative things out there that sometimes you just have to latch onto the happiness. And I was like, I had a patient come to work dressed like me today. And so um, that's little Miss Ellie. And most of the time we're just outside in our free time. This is us hunting on the bag, my husband and I. So um, one of the benefits of my job is, so this is like the barn at our house on that first video, the barn's here. So I'm actually on call in this video, like in this picture, like I am getting paid to triage patient phone calls and go in if there's a delivery, but I'm like doing life and hunting and multitasking. And so I think that's the takeaway I wanted um, is that there's a lot of flexibility in rural medicine. Um, if someone doesn't do what you do, um, just make it happen. That's what I've done here. Um, no one treated hepatitis C here before me. No one treated, um, opioid use disorder with Suboxone other than the pain management clinic. And I do that. And so um, I really love my job. Um, I'm really excited to not have to travel between here and Columbia soon. <laughs> um, I'll stop doing that in July when we get the residency here up and running, but I'm gonna keep working with them until then to get some more experience and keep my toes in the water. Um, but yeah, that's like a typical day in my life. I go home, I feed my dogs. Um, sit with the computer and chart for a while and usually fall asleep to Criminal Minds. That's my most recent Netflix binge. Questions, concerns, did I scare you away? You guys have faces, right? Like I see Noah and Kelly and someone named Jacob, but I'm not actually sure if it's Jacob because there were like five Jacobs earlier. No, I'm the real one. <laughs> okay, got it. So, uh, do you all have any Anyone? questions? Feel free to unmute yourself um, and just ask Dr. Todd directly. And um, do you want to provide your email and contact information? Yeah, I sure can. I'll put it in chat. Um, I will promise to read your email. And if you do not get a response until after February 12th, I am sorry, that is when the ACGME is coming. And until then, that is where the majority of my focus is. With doing C-sections, you have a lot of overhead costs and malpractice. So, um, where's Devin? Devin, do you have a face? Devin, where'd you go? Hi. Cool. It's a good question. Um, I am an employee of the hospital. And so in being an employee of the hospital, um, they cover all of that for me. So it's really important when you're looking for a job um, that you have OB colleagues that are willing to take call with you and that are willing to share their overhead and supplies with you and support you. Um, Noah and I were talking earlier, we kind of grew up around the same place and that was not the case um, where in the other place I was looking. And so delivering babies was very important to me. Um, and so that was actually one of the deciding factors on where I went is because it was a very supportive system of family medicine doing deliveries. Um, I have great backup, great colleagues, um, and I don't feel any pressure if I, I'm not sure what's going on. I say, hey, you know, you've done this a couple thousand more times than me. How about this? Like, what do you think of this? Um, in my residency, we didn't get enough C-section numbers to practice um, C-sections independently right out. And so actually the OBs here have, I wrote up a curriculum and had it passed by the hospital credentialing committee. And so I'm doing um, so many C-sections under them until they d deem that I'm proficient, um, but they still take call with me. If I have a C-section, I just say, hey, like this is the story with this lady. We're not making anywhere like oh we're in transverse arrest or oh heart rate's down i'm going to go set up the or will you come in and that um works really well for us here thank you yeah it's not always that way my sister-in-law does family med with ob and she didn't have such um a great experience so it's really important when you decide where you want to practice that you spend some time with the people that will um, be sharing the or with you Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you very much, Dr. Todd. If something comes up, um, you can either email myself or um, Dr. Todd, and we will most definitely respond to your questions. So I do want to point out again, um, the sponsor of this series is the Missouri Health Professional Placement Services. Um, keep them in mind as you matriculate to become residents and looking for um, help with your student loans and or employment um, once you get to your third year of residency. They are more than happy to help you. Joni Adamson and Ashley Yeager are great to work with. And they, are, they also always exhibit at our conferences. So if you would want to meet them in person, you can attend our meetings as well. And we do offer complimentary registration and lodging to our conferences for medical students based on availability. So, um, and there's some other things we have to work with on that, but you are more than welcome to attend our meetings. So our next session's coming up. The next one is February 24th, and it's gonna be on sports medicine. And Dr. Shepard has done some amateur boxing, um, being the physician for an amateur boxing group. So he will provide some information on that subspecialty within family medicine. So thank you all very much. Um, we look forward to having you as members once you become a practicing family doctor and um, be sure to maintain your membership as a resident as well once you graduate from medical school. So again, thank you. Feel free to submit suggestions to us as well. Have a great day. Thanks for having me guys. Have a good one.